Hello, it is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so we're going to be solving a midweek, mid-difficulty uh, crossword today. And um, I hope it doesn't, I hope it's not on the tougher end of the midweek difficulty because I'm actually somewhat time constrained today. So we'll we'll get on with it. But this uh, midweek, mid-difficulty edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Overfull Hitbox, Joseph Schwalbach, Joe Percy, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support in bringing us this series and sustaining this channel. If you'd like to contribute and support this channel directly yourself, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can become a benefactor and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug or become a patron at any level you choose and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. Um, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Patrons get an extra channel, but it's free otherwise for anyone to join a nice friendly chat community. And there's a link in the description field to that as well. And finally, do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. Thank you to everybody who has. That helps quite a bit with uh, YouTube getting the channel recommended. All right, so let's get on to today's puzzle. This is another debut. We've had several debuts recently, and here is one more. This is a construction by Miranda Caney, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It will be a themed puzzle, of course, and actually, now that I look at it, I can see some circled cells in the grid, and we have a note. So um, let's start solving, and then we'll read the note. The circled letters reading clockwise. All right, okay, I see. So clockwise in a sort of roughly circular pattern. Um, starting in box four, I see. So here, they start here. Reveal what the answers to the nine italicized clues have in common. All right. Well, I can see an italicized clue here. One half cup coarsely chopped for bright or soapy flavor. Okay, well, now that I've clicked on that, I have to, and I've read it, I have to type it in. That would be cilantro or coriander. So um, cilantro, I, I really like cilantro, but for some people it does... Uh, I, I think for genetic, because of the presence of some some gene, possibly, it has a particularly soapy flavor. So some people really can't stand it. Um, I wonder, yeah, I think we're going to be spelling a recipe because I've just noticed, having clicked on this, we've scrolled down far enough to see this other clue about two cups cubed after peeling and pitting. So it'll be some sort of fruit, presumably, if it needs to be um, pitted. But anyway, um, we'll get there. Prefix for the green-minded could be eco eco-conscious or something. Their blood is toxic to humans. Is it eels? And forever and a day. Um, I don't know. Forever and a day. Eternity. What is that that fits in three letters? Sporty model. A coupe? A two-door car? Oh, an eon. Okay, this was eels. There, oops. there we go. And him in French is Louis. And uh, quite a lot of uh, French and Spanish this week. One small red minced for crunch and tang. That'll be a small red onion, presumably. Maybe we're making a salsa. Um, or a guacamole, maybe. Uh, wind is... Uh, oh, to, to wind, to spool thread, for instance. And ish could be or so, and then something you say, oh, 20 ish, 20 or so. To add value to something is to enrich it. And three cloves, min right, three cloves minced for depth and aroma looks like garlic uh, to me. And great cleverness is, well, I don't know, but I just, sorry, <laughs> with cilantro, garlic, red onion, and pitting and something pitted that may be an avocado. I wonder if we're going to be spelling guacamole because this also starts with a G. I wonder if I could just put that in, if that will actually help. Well, I mean, it'll help if it's right, but what I mean is, I wonder if I can use it for anything. Oh, and it ends with E. I'm sure that's, I'm, this will be it. Uh, so let's see, what can we, can we use any of those immediately? In blank parentis legal term, I'm not sure, actually. Mm. 
uh, from here to eternity setting. I don't know that I've ever actually seen from here to eternity. I'm not sure. And Moonstruck star share was in Moonstruck. I was wondering if this would be loco. Maybe it is. Mm, let's put it in. Is it this here from here to eternity set in Oslo? I have no idea. Sound? No. So, oh, Oahu. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, so Oahu in Hawaii, because Sound of the Doctor's Office is ah. So that's why I figured this would be an OA. And there aren't very many locations I can think of that fit that requirement. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar fabric lace. She wore famously wore lace collars, the late Supreme Court justice. And former Wyoming representative Liz, this is a, a U.S. political clue, actually, well, I guess two of them um, in a row because we had Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But this is Liz Cheney, former U.S. representative. And written for an instrumentalist. If something is written for an instrumentalist, it's non-vocal, non No voice? I don't really know that that's a phrase. Fabulist, fabulous. Uh, sorry, fabulous, fabulous. So a fabulous, someone who composes fables. Aesop, the famous uh, fabulous. I suppose he's fabulous <laughs> in the sense that he's the most well-known fabulous, probably. Um, but I think they just like the sort of half rhyme and the assonance, I guess. All right, about two cups cubed after peeling and pitting right. So this will be avocado. And American Pie Ride, a Chevy, drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry, sang Don McLean in American Pie. And Lunch That Saves the Day, a hero, I suppose. So a hero, a you know, grinder, a submarine sandwich. I know there might be distinguish just sort of uh, distinctions between those, but basically they're comparable and they say it saves the day in a punny sort of way because it's a hero so word with color or rhyme color scheme or rhyme scheme and a talkative bird is a macaw oh and it's nice that avocado is right in the middle of the grid i hadn't really noticed that because it is of course the central ingredient to guacamole that's nice all right as i was saying you might uh say to return to a topic of conversation and asia minor there we go geographical uh, representation from i guess kind of the classical world more than the modern world and serpentine twisty does that work a panegyric poet an odist so a composer of the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword. And usually when I say that, people ask, what do I mean? Someone usually asks what I mean by the official this or that. I just mean that the ode comes up in the crossword so frequently that it, that, I mean, it's because it has some, it's a short word with useful letters in it, but it does come up so frequently that I figure it must be the official, uh, official poetic form of the New York Times crossword. All right. Thus is, and so, and singer Donnie or Marie is it Osmond or Osmond? Is it Haley Joe Osmond and Donnie and Marie Osmond, I think? Donnie Osmond, I think that's right. Very cool in slang. Um, I'm not sure offhand. To chew on something is to gnaw on it. And grand ice cream brand. Edie's grand sort of rings a bell. That sounds like something. I think that's, I think there's an ice cream, Edie's grand. And to pick up the tab is to pay for a meal or a drink. And very cool in slang, right? What is this? Tops, I suppose? This doesn't look very good, though, does it? No, to sidestep something is to dodge it. So, oh, dope. Okay, there we go. Uh, that is very cool in slang. And cat calls could be muse, calls from a cat. So literal calls from a cat as opposed to the more idiomatic meaning of sort of cat calling somebody, you know, in an aggressive manner. Uh, talkative bird is a mina, right? Which I usually see spelled M-Y-N-A-H, but I have seen this alternative spelling as well. Stat, at once, do it immediately. Stat, quickly. One vine ripened, chopped for texture and color, a tomato, right? Here we go. You can often add a tomato to a guacamole. They don't need to necessarily, but I usually like to. One half of a teaspoon for a little extra flavor. Really, try it. That's interesting. So it'll be a it'll be a ground spice. Cumin. I don't know that I've ever put cumin in 
guacamole. I've put paprika in guacamole. Maybe I have. I can't remember. I don't know. Um, that's interesting, really. But it must not be traditional because the uh, instructions seem to need to convince the reader. So perhaps my experience is a common one to, to not have immediately leapt to that. Shade a lot like lilac mauve. It's a shade much like lilac, sort of purplish kind of color. And roll for Patti Lapone and Madonna. Was it Evita from the musical Evita? That would be my guess, starting with EV. It's hard to imagine what else that would be. And I think I remember Madonna having been in, what, maybe a film version of that? Uh, Soccer Great Ham, Mia Ham. Mia Ham's come up, I think, three times just in the last few weeks. And if you're accommodating, you're easy. You're, you know, you'll accommodate somebody, take care of them without putting up a fuss. It's your move, and then a bill blocking vote could be nay, so you vote yay or nay on a bill in a legislature. All right, let's move back up here so we can start a new part of the grid. Ghostly apparition would be a phantom, a ghost, and one teaspoon pink or black for emphasis. Salt? Salt? Pink or black? What? <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. I mean, I know there are pink, you know, Himalayan pink salt and black salt from I don't remember what, but what a funny thing to emphasize. I would never bother. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest for that, if that's what this is. Maybe that's a different, maybe it's not salt. Junior hurdle for short now. This is PSAT. This comes up occasionally in the New York Times crossword, the practice standardized achievement test taken by juniors and then the full-fledged SAT taken by seniors in, in secondary school and high school. That's funny. So I guess it is pink or black salt. All right, go figure. Um, Pilgrim at Mecca would be a hodge. Um, is that spelled DJ or JJ? Yeah, JJ, slightly open, ajar, right, Hodge. I think there might be a variant spelled that way, but um, because obviously it's being, you know, written, written in a different different script. But, um, oh no, oh no, Hodgey, because the Hodge is the pilgrimage and a person who makes that pilgrimage is a Hodgey. There we go, sorry, that was incorrect. Anyway, that was because that TJ looked wrong and I realized my error. But baseball's... Martinez, um, Tino or Tito, Chester Arthur's middle name. Uh, the president, I don't know Chester Arthur's middle name, but presumably it's Alan because that would allow both of each of these names to work. That's a bit of a funny cross. Two, uh, two given names, uh, crossing one another. Not, not necessarily what I would consider top form, but, uh, but there we go. At least at least we were able to infer the answer. All right. Body. If something's body, it's raucous. No, that doesn't fit. Body is sort of, uh, I thought of raunchy as well, but that also doesn't fit. Hmm. Reverse a thumbs up for on Facebook is to unlike something. And Smallville surname. So this is where Superman is from, right? So Clark Kent and the Kent family who raised him. To slink towards somebody, or, you know, you could say to sidle over, to slink over, maybe. We'll see if that's right. Revelers at reunion, right? Okay, you could have a university reunion attended by alumni, so former students of that school, graduates of that school. And an apple for a teacher, maybe, could be an iMac, maybe. So rather than the fruit, we're referring to a, a uh, an Apple computer that a teacher might use, an iMac. And great cleverness could be genius, uh, just the gist of an idea could be the nub of it, the sort of core of it. Ah, body ribald. There we go. There's another synonym of body that I didn't think of. So cotton gin inventor Whitney, one of these things you just learn growing up in the U.S. for whatever reason is that Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin. It's just one of those things you, you learn. All right. To, uh, carry out is to go food for takeaway, uh, carry out to go. And Build some muscle is to tone up, maybe? Is that what that is? Written for an instrumentalist. Right. I still don't, I still can't see what this is for some reason. Hmm. I don't know. They can make you sick. Germs can. And brand for a butterfly expert, perhaps. Oh, speedo, because it's referring to the butterfly stroke in swimming. So a speedo, a speedo swimsuit. Speedo brand, swimsuit, so brand. It's another proper noun. To rudely stare at somebody is to ogle them. And 
uh, here we have Ile de la Cité, which is um, the island in Paris that, um, you know, in the, in the center of town on the river where um, Notre Dame is located, Ile de la Cité. And then a marine fish that's also the name of a hairstyle. So a mullet is a hairstyle and a marine fish. So there we go. And Nancy Drew's bow, I don't know, Ned or Ted, probably Ned. Saskatchewan's second largest city after Saskatoon. It must be Regina. So there we go. I guess it was that named for Queen Victoria, maybe? Victoria Regina would be my guess. All right. One seeded and minced for sure. Ah, jalapeno. Also go in uh, guacamole. And rocks out jams. Plays music in a sort of informal setting usually. I guess it doesn't need to be informal, but when you say you're going to jam, that usually means that. Mouse with his own island in a Newberry honor book. Hmm, I'm not sure. And somewhat could be a bit or a tad, maybe. I'm not sure which. And I'm not sure about the name of the mouse either. Phenomenon that may be dank or trending. Oh, a dank meme or a trending meme. Wow, okay. Right, an extremely modern day uh, clue and answer pair. There we go. Uh, all right. Oh, one small juice for citrus notes and to preserve color. Lime, yes, lime, absolutely essential in guacamole. Lime is one of the great sort of, I don't know, sensory combinations of smell and taste. It's just an, just an amazing, amazing thing. Somewhat. So it looks like a bit now. And written for an instrumentalist. Why do I still not see this? Oh, notated. I see. So the ah, the point isn't that it's not for a vocal performer. The point is just that it's written for any instrumentalist at all to perform. The point is that it's written. That was the active part. Written, not instrumentalist. Ah, okay. So it's notated. It's on notation paper. And able, maybe? Mouse with his own island? I don't know. Oh, well, here we go. Kane's Rosebud for one. Look at that, two pieces of sort of fiction, essentially, are crossing one another. We have Citizen Kane and whatever mouse has his own island in a Newberry Honor book. In any case, Kane's Rosebud. This was so weird. I think this was in, I think this exact thing, which some people would consider a spoiler, I don't particularly consider it a spoiler in the sense that it doesn't, it wouldn't meaningfully change your experience of watching the film in any way, I don't think. Um, but anyway, an arguable spoiler for Citizen Kane that Rosebud is the sled. And that was also in a New York Times crossword within the last couple of weeks. That's so funny. So anyway, there we go. Uh, and that was the Wednesday crossword. How am I doing on time? Okay, I have just a couple of minutes and we'll wrap this up quickly. But here was our very handy theme in that we could, you can immediately use this theme for something. So let's go over it quickly. So I, always, I wonder why they choose... Um, I was going to say, why did they choose to italicize the clues rather than have them be highlighted by the... It's because there's nothing to highlight. There isn't actually a revealer. Every Each clue is an independent, um, you know, an independent uh, sort of element that, that speaks to the whole. And also, I suppose, because highlighting of clue, you know, you could click on this and then have it highlight... Oops, sorry, what am I looking for? You could click on this and have it highlight the other recipe clues, which would be an aid, but it wouldn't be sufficient because in the print version of the, the crossword, that wouldn't, obviously that wouldn't be happening. So we need some way to indicate these. Anyway, let's go through and read the recipe. We'll take one half of a cup coarsely chopped uh, cilantro for bright or soapy flavor, hopefully not soapy, and about two cups cubed of avocado after peeling and pitting. I always find that kind of measurement frustrating when it's two cups after peeling and pitting because I mean what <laughs> you just I guess you just keep peeling and pitting them until you reach two cups but this is why weight-based measurements are more useful although I suppose with an avocado the pit could be a variable weight so that's not quite as useful as it might be but still would be a good starting point in any case we'll then move on to one seeded and minced jalapeno for heat and one small red minced onion for crunch and tang. Three cloves minced garlic for depth and aroma. 
one teaspoon pink or black salt for emphasis. Just <laughs> looking askance at that, at that clue again. And then um, one half teaspoon cumin for a little extra flavor. Really try it. And finally, one small juiced lime for citrus notes and to preserve color. I'd be perfectly happy to try this try this guacamole recipe, including the cumin. Probably wouldn't bother sourcing the pink or black salt. I'm going to be honest on that one. Uh, but there we have it. That is our, what seems like a perfectly nice recipe for guacamole. And no peas, which was actually, the, I remember several years ago, the New York Times was embroiled in a whole, well, I say embroiled in, it sort of created a minor controversy by calling for peas to be included in avocado, which um, as as recipes tend to do online, caused quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of outrage, maybe faux outrage in some cases, but I think real outrage is in some. Anyway, um, I can understand why that why why people were a bit baffled and upset by that. But uh, the cumin's interesting, and I'd be happy to give it a shot. And there we go. That was the Wednesday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. Midweek, mid difficulty crossword. I don't have time for the extra clues today. I do have to dash, but I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday crossword. This was a very gentle theme, even for a Wednesday, I think. So tomorrow should be a step up in terms of how intricate or complex it gets, but we'll just have to find out. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. (laughs) 